Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and in today's video, Bitcoin just broke $16,000. We are trading above 16K for the first time in three years, and we need to talk about that in today's video. But of course, that's not the only thing we want to talk about, because in today's video, we also want to talk about the consolidation pattern on Bitcoin that Bitcoin is currently breaking bullish out of. There is a caveat that we need to add to that, though, because there is bearish R side divergence on that breakout, and I need to show you that, but on top of all of that, we also need to talk about some fundamentals on Bitcoin because right now 98% of addresses that hold Bitcoin are in profit. Surprised? No. Are you one of the 2% that's still holding on to your bags from 20K? Maybe you are, maybe you aren't. If you are, that's pretty funny. Guys, we have a lot to get into in today's video. I hope you do enjoy today's video. As always, if you do, consider hitting that like and subscribe button and make sure to follow us on Twitter at CryptoJeb because the giveaway ends today. Make sure to do that. I'm going to be announcing the winner tomorrow. But without much further ado, guys, let's go ahead and dive right on into it. Before we get started, guys, I do want to give a shout out to one of the things that makes this channel possible, and that would be the exchange Bybit. As you guys know, if you look at the pinned comment in the comment section down below, you're going to find a link to sign up with Bybit. That is an affiliate link, and if you sign up for Bybit with that link, not only will you be getting access to one of the largest, most trusted exchanges in cryptocurrency, you'll also be helping to support this channel. Don't forget, you can also use the code WIN$500 to get $500 back when you deposit Bitcoin onto exchange. All right, guys, we got a lot to get into, so let's go ahead and jump on to the chart. First things first at the time of recording this video bitcoin is trading at sixteen thousand dollars and i kid you not i actually had a dream last night like you know one of those meme dreams where it's like he put the buy order in don't beat i had one of those dreams that i was trading it i traded the breakout the bitcoin is breaking 16k i'm prophetic or something because i had a dream it broke 16k last night and then it crashed to ten thousand dollars i'm like do i buy more and I bought a hell of a lot more. So hopefully if that does end up ever happening again, I will do the same thing. Anyway, that's beside the point. Let's get back to the chart. Bitcoin, as you can see, was in this consolidation pattern. We have been watching this consolidation pattern for the last three days, saying that when this breaks out, it's going to be big for Bitcoin. And that obviously is true. We can see on the Bollinger Bands that volatility is now returning to Bitcoin. And we can also see that because obviously Bitcoin is, you know, breaking bullish. The interesting thing about this breakout, though, is that I've drawn an uptrending level of resistance and an uptrending level of support. Reason for that is because Bitcoin is breaking out through a trading channel, not through just a normal parabolic breakout. That's interesting for a lot of reasons we're going to be getting back to that later but for right now i want to zoom in on this uptrending level of resistance because it actually is screaming something at you if you take a look at the rsi i don't know if you guys saw this but i definitely did the uptrending level of resistance that bitcoin is under right now is actually divergent to the resistance level on the rsi on the hourly chart what this means is that we have hourly chart rsi divergence and it's not the bullish kind it is the bearish kind and side note so that you don't have to look up an rsi divergence cheat sheet every time let me give you a couple of tips on this number one one, if the trend lines are going away from each other, they're called divergence. If they're going towards each other, that's called convergence. So it's either RSI divergence or convergence. It's not just all divergence. There is such a thing as RSI convergence. This is divergent because they're going away from each other. And if you're looking at the resistance levels, it's normally going to be a sell signal. And if you're looking at the support levels, it's normally going to be a buy signal. Convergence and divergence can be either bullish or bearish, but you're really zoning in and looking at the support level or the resistance level. Hope you got that. I'll give you a visual. As you can see with divergent, you have the resistance level and the resistance level diverging, the convergence level converging, converging, divergence, diverging, diverging, except this is on the support level, so it's buy signal. Convergence is converging and it's on the support, so it's a buy signal. Sell signals are the resistance level. That is typically how that works. So as we can see, these two levels are diverging. They're going away from each other and we're looking at the resistance level. So it is bearish RSI divergence is what we're looking at on the hourly chart. And remember, RSI divergence is extremely, extremely powerful, but so too are hype cycles. And considering we are going into another hype cycle, we need to keep that in mind with our technical analysis. What this does indicate is that over the next 12 hours, we may see some kind of correction. Honestly, probably not a big enough correction to do anything other than pull us back to this uptrending level of support or even this one right here. Bitcoin through these two trend lines has a strong zone of support in here that it probably would not breach. But just keep in mind, there is a possibility Bitcoin falls over here, especially considering this breakout has not had the kind of momentum we would have liked. Now, most of America is still waking up, so maybe it just hasn't happened yet and is going to by the time you see this video. But be aware of this, guys. Bitcoin is in the process of breaking out of what might be one of the most important consolidation patterns in the last three years of Bitcoin. And there is going to be more volatility than what we're seeing right now. I guarantee it. 
Wait for it. It's going to come. I don't know when it's going to come. I can't guarantee you which direction it's going to go. I think it's going to be bullish, but I could very easily be wrong on that. The point is, volatility is about to make a big comeback, and you want to be ready for it. When we're looking at trade setups, remember, guys, you want to buy in just a little bit above the resistance level or start shorting just a little bit below the support level. By the way, I would not encourage you to short because Bitcoin is in a massive bullish uptrend and support levels aren't really that strong because Bitcoin might not even test them in the first place since we're in an uptrend. But just keep in mind that the application of what I just said would be a buy order right above this resistance level. If Bitcoin starts going parabolic and it breaks uh, an uptrending level of resistance, maybe an uptrending buy order up here, then it might be a good place to buy into Bitcoin. Now, hold off. Don't do that until we finish the video because I have something I need to add to that before we leave. But for now, I want to jump out to the four hourly chart because as you can see, guys, on the four hourly chart, we have a very important pattern here. We have a green, red, green. This is a pattern that I haven't really seen many other people talk about, but I have always found these to be very bullish on Bitcoin. A good example is right here, green, red, green. We have a, a green candlestick with a non-engulfing red candlestick followed by an engulfing green candlestick. These normally show up in the first 50% of a trend and they normally indicate more bullishness to come on Bitcoin. Again, I've never seen anyone else talk about these. I don't think I came up with it, but it is something I've never really seen before. There's one right here, for example, one right there, one right, let's see how far I back I have to go. Uh, there's one right here back in October also. So we are seeing a green, red, green right now on the four hourly chart for Bitcoin. That is very bullish on Bitcoin and that does contradict the bearish RSI divergence that we saw earlier. Another thing that contradicts that bearish RSI is that we're bullish on the MACD on the four hourly chart. In fact, yesterday we crossed bullish on the MACD for the first time in over a week after crossing bearish on November the 7th. That is a very good sign for Bitcoin and also, by the way, on the four hourly chart, the RSI is not divergent. It's actually in parallel because both of these levels are trending to the upside. Remember guys, Guys, RSI divergence is going to be proportional to the time frame it shows up on. Hourly chart RSI divergence is probably not going to affect the daily chart in the same way. Daily chart RSI divergence might not even be recognized on the four hourly. All right, so moving on here, there's another thing I want to talk about, and that would be the TD sequential on the four hourly chart. As you guys can see, last night we did hit a nine flash on the TD sequential, but we immediately reset it and we're now back to one. So even though Bitcoin got overextended and hit that nine, we are still doing just fine. I didn't mean to rhyme, but I did on time oh my gosh Ooh, ooh. let's go another thing i want to show you guys is out on the daily chart and it would be this candlestick right here it is a little bit lopsided but it's what you call a bearish weighted spinning top on bitcoin see the lower wick is just a little bit longer than the upper wick the body is not very large at all but this would be considered a spinning top and even its little brother candlestick over here would also potentially be considered a spinning top same with this one so honestly there are three spinning tops in this pattern right here and that is very important for bitcoin because it signals indecision but see what happened over the last two days we saw two major green candlesticks that means that even though there was indecision in the market the market decided to go bullish now the good news about this is that bitcoin's breaking to the upside and not to the downside, but the bad news is Bitcoin didn't know what it wanted to do as little as two days ago, which means that the bullishness that we're in right now needs a little bit of time to build momentum. Think about it like this, guys. Bitcoin has been in an uptrend for 30 days. It stopped the uptrend, and now it's trying to restart a second one. It has to build the momentum, not from scratch, but close to from scratch, which is why we haven't seen a massive breakout in the last 24 hours is because Bitcoin is rebuilding that momentum after trading sideways. Another thing I want to mention on daily chart is that we do still see bullish on the MACD. As you can see, we've been bullish on the MACD since 14th of September 2020. And that's all well and good. But the thing that goes with that that I really want to show you is actually the Heiken Ashi. Haven't talked about that in a while, have we? Well, if you look at the Heiken Ashi, we see a couple of very important things. Number one, the last two candlesticks that we're looking at have no lower shadow which is very bullish. See all these lower shadows down here? This is when Bitcoin was losing momentum. Right now, Bitcoin just got rid of those lower shadows. That's a big development. But also, the other thing I want to show you is that in the last, oh, I don't know, let's see, 25 days, we have had one red Heikinashi candlestick. Talk about bullish, guys. Seriously, if we look at the MACD, we can see that back on this cross, back on the 14th or 15th of September, we have seen 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 red candlesticks in, uh, yeah, 59 days. So we're seeing about 80% of candlesticks on Heikinashi being green. That, my friends, is incredibly bullish for Bitcoin. And in fact, it does just go to show you that the trend that we are in is your friend and you shouldn't be shorting right now, especially with a bullish breakout. I mean, it's possible Bitcoin breaks the downside. You could enter a short trade, but I would consider it more of a uh, investment opportunity than a short trade. So 
wouldn't bet against this market, guys. We are pushing very hard. And in fact, we're up about $20 since the beginning of this clip. <laughs> guys, let's go over the facts again. We have RSI divergence on the hourly chart, which is bearish. But remember, it's the hourly chart, so it's probably not going to matter all that much. We're bullish on the four hourly MACD. TD sequential reset on the four hourly, which is bullish. We also have a green, red, green formation on the four hourly chart. We also just broke bullish out of one of the most important consolidation patterns that we have seen in many years for Bitcoin. We just reached a new high, by the way. I don't know if I've mentioned that yet, but yeah, Bitcoin hasn't been trading above $16,000 in, oh, I don't know, three years. For perspective, the last time that Bitcoin was trading above $16,000, this channel had 500 subscribers. <laughs> also, Heiken Ashi is resoundingly green over the last 60 days. We've had 11 red days. MACD has been bullish on daily chart for two months. And guys, remember all the fundamentals that have happened in the last 60 days. We saw PayPal step into the space. We've seen on-chain fundamentals just explode. We've seen all kinds of new hash rate on Bitcoin. And one more thing I want to talk about is the Bitcoin dominance. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but Bitcoin Bitcoin dominance is sitting at 65. Bitcoin market dominance ever since September the 13th has risen from 56.6% all the way up to 64.5%, 8% in two months. Now, why is that important, Jeb? The reason that's important is because during bull markets, Bitcoin gains dominance. As you can see, March 24th, Bitcoin was at 50% market dominance. September the 8th, 2019, we were at 70. If you guys don't know the charts as well as I do, you might be wondering, Hmm, Jeb, what happened during that time between March and September? Well, let me just show you what March and September is for Bitcoin. Uh, yeah, this is March and September. Bitcoin's market dominance goes up with price. And by the way, it typically goes down in bear markets because people are looking to the altcoins for investment. This is very important. Bitcoin having market dominance goes up shows that people are more confident in Bitcoin than in the altcoins. A lot of times when Bitcoin isn't doing well, people turn to the altcoins because they hope they're going to get bigger gains over there in trading or investing. But when Bitcoin is in a bull market, when it's in a major rally, it is going to see a dominance hike. And that's exactly what we're seeing. We haven't seen dominance this high in over a year. And by the way, here's something else. On this exact same page over on CoinMarketCap, you may have missed this, but guess what? During the last bull market, total market dominance for all cryptocurrencies was sitting at $341 billion. Respectable, but nowhere near 2017 levels of 400, of, excuse me, 800 billion at its peak. Right now, let me make this very clear to you. Bitcoin has gained market dominance and we're sitting at $440 billion of market cap. So we've gained a full $100 billion in market capitalization over the last bull market a year and a half ago, and market dominance is starting to reach for new highs. I said a year earlier. It's actually only been since June since Bitcoin was this high on market dominance, but you get my point. It's increasing. And by the way, our final story is this. 98% of Bitcoins unspent out... By, by the way, let me pause here for a second. Do you say Bitcoin plural or Bitcoins plural? I have been confused about that since I got into the crypto space, and it was one of those things where it's like, I ought to know this by now. What is it? Bitcoins or is it Bitcoin plural? I've always said I have 15 Bitcoin or I have 20 Bitcoin or I have 100 Bitcoin, not I have 100 Bitcoins. What is it? I don't know. Tell me. Anyway, back to the story. 98% of Bitcoins unspent outputs are worth more than when made. So that's kind of a confusing title to be honest with you, but all it means is this chart right here, which shows that 98% of Bitcoin in existence is in profit from when it was bought. As you can see from this chart, uh, the end of 2015 was a pretty sad year for Bitcoin. <laughs> and even during March, about 50% of addresses were still in profit. By the way, this is the takeaway from this. I love that 98% of addresses are in profit. That means that you're almost certainly in profit. Unless you're one of those guys that bought at 20K and you're still holding on to it. Dude, I thought I had balls of steel, whatever you want to call it. Good on you because 2% of Bitcoin is in loss right now, which means it, I don't know how you did that, but props to you. Tell me in the comment section down below if you're still holding on to unprofitable Bitcoin from 20K. But anyway, the takeaway from this is that Bitcoin had 50% of its transactions still in profit when Bitcoin dropped to $4,000. That means that over 50% of the Bitcoin was bought below 4K. This is actually what I want to talk about here. Look at this. You see this over here? 50%. Back when Bitcoin dropped to $4,000, over half of the Bitcoin was still in profit. The way I take that is that essentially 50% of the Bitcoin is not even in circulation because it's sitting in a wallet somewhere and it was bought years ago. That's really important, actually, because that means that the circulating supply of Bitcoin is half what we thought it was, which means that the market capitalization is actually a lot more mobile right now than it was because so much Bitcoin is out of circulation. That's a really big deal. That means people are gradually moving Bitcoin into investment portfolios and not touching it. That means that the trust in the cryptocurrency space is increasing. And guys, that's what the... The building burns down, it burns down. Let's try and finish this out. I don't know if you can hear that. There's a fire 
alarm. Well, we're just going to have to deal with that. The point I was making in the ending in the outro here is that I want to ask you guys, how much do you trust in Bitcoin? How much do you trust in the cryptocurrency space? Do you trust in Bitcoin's ability to continue its rally? Do you trust in Bitcoin's ability to go to 100K, 200K, 300K? Where do you think Bitcoin is going and how much do you trust in it? That's what I want to hear about in the comment section down below. I hope you guys did enjoy today's video. I had a lot of fun making it. There is a hurricane that went over my town like three hours ago. I drove here in the aftermath of a hurricane because I'm not missing any videos. We got stuff to talk about, guys. Bitcoin is hitting $16,107, $11. $12, $15 at the time of recording this video. So we definitely couldn't miss that. Yeah, so like I said, I don't know if you can hear that, but I'm going to go find out if there's actually a fire in the building. Um, yeah, follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Instagram. You might see something over on Instagram about the fire that may or may not be going on in this building. But follow us at Crypto Jeb over on Instagram and Twitter. That is going to wrap it out for today's video. I'm going to try not to get set on fire. But before I go, I do, of course, as always, want to thank each and every single last one of you for watching, as always. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Oh.